Most people think hair loss treatments are all the same. Lotions, pills, and empty promises. But what if you've been using the wrong treatment? For starters, knowing the difference between finasteride, also known as Propecia, and minoxidil, also known as Rogaine, could save your hair and years of frustration. Hi, my name is Andrew. I'm the co-founder of Antigen and HairDAO. We're a decentralized community of researchers, patients, and scientists, and we're dedicated to being able to turn a slick, bald scalp fully hairy one day. We run labs, fund our own studies, and work with experts to figure out what actually works and what will work in the future. By the end of this video, you'll know all there is to know about minoxidil and finasteride, how they work, who each works best for, types of results you should expect from each, and actually how best to combine them for maximum regrowth. Okay, so when people talk about hair loss treatments, two names come up over and over again. Those names are finasteride and minoxidil. They may sound similar, and they're both designed to treat hair loss, but when you look under the hood, they can serve very different purposes. Finasteride is a prescription medication often taken daily as a pill. Oral finasteride is FDA approved for treating male pattern hair loss, and it's been studied for decades. It works by blocking an enzyme called 5-alpha reductase type 2, which would otherwise convert testosterone into DHT. DHT binds to hair follicles and weakens them to the point of extreme miniaturization, whereby they no longer poke through your scalp, providing you with the visible hair you would see on your head. So by lowering that DHT, finasteride not only helps you keep the hair you already have, but can actually spark regrowth in areas that have been thinning. Many clinics, including Antigen, now also prescribe topical finasteride. While not yet FDA approved for treating hair loss, topical finasteride has been found to induce the same kind of regrowth that you would see with oral finasteride with potentially less systemic side effects. Minoxidil, on the other hand, works in a very different way. Instead of inhibiting any kind of hormones, it's actually stimulating the hair follicle to grow. Most people know minoxidil as it was popularized, the foam called Rogaine, which can be applied once to twice a day. It's available over the counter and it can be used by men or women. Originally developed to treat hypertension or high blood pressure, scientists still don't fully understand the mechanism of action behind minoxidil. However, evidence shows that minoxidil may open potassium channels, stimulate blood flow to the hair follicles, and actually increase growth signals as well. Minoxidil also seems to protect hair follicles from cellular stress and inflammation that would otherwise damage their ability to regrow hair. Because these treatments act on the hair follicles via completely different mechanisms, they're actually typically prescribed in combination now by dermatologists to hit the different pathways. Finasteride to stop the hormonal triggers of hair loss, and minoxidil to actually stimulate various growth factors in the hair follicles. The complementary action of both minoxidil and finasteride are why when people use them in combination, they actually typically see the best results rather than using either treatment as a standalone. However, timing is critical. Both treatments work best while hair follicles are still miniaturized but poking through the skin. Once the scalp is slick bald and the follicles have fully miniaturized or been replaced by scar tissue, minoxidil or finasteride isn't going to really generate the best results. However, if you start early on one of these treatments, you have the highest chances of preserving what you have and even re growing some of the hairs that have begun their miniaturization process. Stop taking either of them and the benefits of the regrowth you've seen will start to fade within months and the original hair loss pattern you had will continue. Neither treatment is a one-time cure. They're much more like brushing your teeth where daily maintenance will result in long-term health. So once you can understand this timeline, it'll help you correctly set your expectations. You'll no longer start panicking when you don't see instant results or in fact, you see some initial shedding and you'll be able to persevere and keep taking your treatment daily until you notice the real regrowth that will happen from six to 12 months. Patience and consistency is what ultimately leads to success. Okay, now we'll talk about the side effects and safety profile of each treatment. Whenever we talk about hair loss treatments, the follow-up question is always, okay, but is it safe? And that's totally fair. If you're taking a pill every day or rubbing something on your head for decades at a time, you're gonna wanna have an accurate understanding of what the risks are. To start, finasteride has been studied for decades. And while it's generally safe, it does have some very real risks. The best known are sexual side effects, and finasteride has been known to induce erectile dysfunction, decreased libido, and ejaculate changes in some people. Depending on the study, these side effects can occur in 1-3% to of men, even up to 15% of men in other studies. In most cases, the symptoms resolve after you discontinue the treatment. Rarely, some men report persistent issues, and there have been reports of infertility, psychological changes such as anxiety and depression, 
and even breast tissue increases in men. While these outcomes are uncommon, their effects can be quite severe. And for that reason, many men say that finasteride just is not worth it to them. Finasteride is not approved for women at all. Uh, they cannot take the oral or the topical versions, particularly if they're of childbearing age as it can harm a developing fetus. Generally, minoxidil is much better tolerated, particularly in the topical foam or liquid versions. The most common side effects are itching, dryness, redness of the scalp, and those can typically be resolved by just changing the formulation or switching up your hair care routine. Oral minoxidil, on the other hand, sometimes prescribed as an off-label treatment to hair loss, can cause some more serious side effects. Some of the systemic side effects can include swelling in the ankles or eyelids, blood pressure changes, dizziness, uh, and actually unwanted uh, facial or body hair growth. Some of the more serious side effects of oral minoxidil have been fluid around the heart or arrhythmias, particularly in those who have taken it at higher dosages and with pre-existing heart conditions. Now that you know how each treatment works, let's talk about the results that you can realistically expect. This is where the marketing hype typically will overshadow the reality of what's possible. Finasteride, understandably, probably has the strongest clinical track record of any treatment in terms of treating male pattern hair loss. In a pivotal one-year trial, about 80% of men taking oral finasteride showed improvement of hair growth. Average density gains were typically in the range of 10 to 15 hair follicles per square centimeter compared to the placebo. By lowering DHT, finasteride not only preserves existing hair follicles, but can actually reverse the miniaturization of follicles that have begun that process. The result is a fuller, thicker head of hair, which can last for decades. Minoxidil also delivers meaningful regrowth. In a major 5% minoxidil study, about 52% of the participants saw meaningful hair regrowth. The average regrowth was about eight to 12 hairs per square centimeter. Like finasteride, minoxidil encourages hairs to switch back into the antigen growth phase, promoting thicker hair shafts and more hairs per square centimeter. The key point is that both minoxidil and finasteride can stimulate hair growth while they may act on different mechanisms of action within the body. The extent of the benefit that you'll see from taking either will primarily be dependent on timing. The sooner you get on treatment, the less the follicles have already miniaturized, the better your results will likely be. Once the follicle is completely gone, hidden under a slick bald area of your scalp, neither treatment will really do much in terms of regrowth. So the earlier you start treatment and the more consistent you are over a long period of time, the best chances you're gonna have of regrowing and maintaining your hair. In terms of efficacy, the best regrowth is going to happen when you combine treatment using both finasteride and minoxidil at the same time. Okay, so timelines and what to expect. This is where a lot of patients lose patients and quit the treatment before they actually experience any regrowth. Hair growth happens in cycles, from the antigen to the catagen to the telogen phase, back to the antigen growth phase, and both minoxidil and finasteride need time to sync with those cycles before you'll notice visible regrowth. Minoxidil usually takes about three to six months before results are visible, and you'll typically notice some light shedding in the beginning as the old miniaturized hairs get pushed out by thicker, more terminal hairs. The shedding can typically be alarming for patients who are already dealing with hair thinning, and when they notice that acceleration, they think the minoxidil isn't working. In fact, in many cases, it's actually a sign that the treatment will have an even better effect on your overall regrowth. If you're able to push through that stage, the regrowth will kick in, and you'll notice a fuller, thicker head of hair. Finasteride also takes several months to work, also about three to six months before you can see visible regrowth. And the shedding phase of finasteride can be actually particularly intense, even more intense than what you would expect with minoxidil. Just like minoxidil, that is a sign that you are kicking out the miniaturized hairs and the new fuller, thicker hair follicles are gonna grow in in their place. Similarly to minoxidil, you'll first see regrowth with finasteride from the three to six month mark. Here's the big picture. In very large clinical trials, side effects remain very rare for both treatments, particularly when taken at normal cadences and at recommended dosages. That said, risk tolerance is personal. Some people are okay accepting a low risk of severe side effects, and some people aren't. Somebody who is looking to achieve more aggressive hair regrowth with a slightly increased risk of side effects, I'd recommend taking finasteride after consulting with your doctor, of course. If you're more risk averse and you're willing to accept potentially less hair regrowth, topical minoxidil could be a great option. However, knowing all of this decision up front allows you to make the decision yourself with your doctor. It makes it less of a gamble and more of an informed decision or risk that you're taking. Okay, so the pros and cons, who should use what? Now that you know how each treatment works and what the risks are, let's put it all together. Finasteride offers stronger regrowth potential and the convenience of a once daily pill. By directly inhibiting DHT, it blocks the hormonal cause of hair loss. For many men, especially those with a long family history of hair loss, 
process. It can halt or reverse thinning that is occurring on the crown or the hairline. But there are real trade-offs. Finasteride is only FDA approved for men, so it requires a prescription as well. Chances of getting side effects are relatively slim. They are severe, which can feel like too steep a cost for many. Minoxidil is the safer and more accessible option. It's available over the counter for both men and women, and it has decades of data to back up that it can promote thicker, fuller hair. It's also flexible to use. It can be applied topically once or twice a day as it was originally clinically studied. Results can be relatively modest on minoxidil compared to finasteride, but it's accessible and relatively low risk. For men, uh, particularly those who are less concerned with potential side effects, the best regrowth will be achieved through the combination of both finasteride and minoxidil as they work through different mechanisms of action, and so stacking them will yield the best results. Unfortunately, obviously for women, this is not a possibility as finasteride cannot be prescribed to women. For the time being, it's really important with these existing treatments that you get on your hair loss early because while they can reverse hair miniaturization effects when the hair follicles are still poking through the scalp and, and you know getting more miniaturized, we still do not have the technology or the treatments to be able to reverse a fully slick bald scalp. So get on these treatments early and hopefully you now have a clear picture of how the two most proven treatments for hair loss work individually as well as how they could potentially be used together for maximum regrowth. If you've made it to the end of this video, you liked it, please like and subscribe. It'll help us keep making more of these as we look to solve hair loss once and for all.